if the Lord is with us? How come we have all these big churches, mega churches? We have, we have the synagogue church of our nation. We have Christ Embassy. We have Redeemed. We have Winners Chapel. They have so many crowds. If God is still with us, he will pray and pray and pray all these anointed men of God. How come we are not, we are, our life is not improving? If the Lord is with us, why are we still poor? People are dying of hunger. God, where are you? Why Gideon was complaining? The angel of God turned his back. Read the Bible. When he finished complaining, the Bible said he turned to him again and said, <laughs> He said, Go with the strength that is in you. Hallelujah. Woo! <laughs> Look at what he said. He said, he didn't say, I'm going to give you strength. He told Gideon, you just go and solve the problem with the strength that is in you. Look at Gideon again, another Nigerian man. Another poverty thinking mindset Nigerian man. Look at what he said. When the angel of the Lord said, you go and fix the problem. Hey! Gideon said, oh! <laughs> hey! Me! He said, my clan eh, is the weakest clan of Manasseh. Manasseh is not even a warrior in Israel. Okay? They are not even, they are not fighters. And in these people that are not counted as fighters, they are in, my own clan among the weak is the weakest. <laughs> and not only that, that my clan is the weak, weakest of the Manasseh, not only that, me that you are talking about now, me. <laughs> I am the last born. <laughs> I am the last born. You see? What is, what is happening? God was seeing warrior in Gideon. God was seeing a courageous man in Gideon. What was Gideon seeing? <laughs> a last born, a tribe of Manasseh, the weakest clan. You see that? So this is the problem. God is telling some of us in Africa. God is telling some of us in Nigeria today. You. God is telling you today. You have the capacity to take Nigeria out of poverty. But you are saying, hey, oh God, man, I'm not educated. I don't have money. My father is poor. My mother is poor. My wife family is poor. Everybody around me is poor. I cannot read. I cannot write. Hey, what an excuse. Do you know all those times that Al Kelly was Taking Grammy Award, it can't even read and write. Reading and write is not an excuse at all. You don't have money in your pocket, it's not an excuse. There is no excuse when you are fulfilling your purpose. Man, all right. There are some of you, some of us, the reason I'm writing a book on the reason for unanswered prayer, okay? One of the reasons is God is looking at someone that is going to feed the entire Africa. And you go to your knee, you pray to God, give me these days our daily bread. What an insult to God. God is looking at someone to feed the, a continent. And your prayer is for you, give us these days our daily bread? Is that your prayer? Hi. God is looking at someone, a graduate, that will be manufacturing tractors for farmers in Nigeria. And you are taking your CVs everywhere. You are taking your CVs from one bank to another. 
I'm a graduate, accountant. Oh God, this resume, I pray anointing oil. You are running from churches to churches for anointing oil to anoint your resume so that they will give you a job, a slave, to be a slave. God is looking at someone that produces tractors. Hey! God is looking at someone that will own the largest mango juice producer in Africa that supplies to America, supply to China, supply to uh, Australia, supply to Europe. You are praying for God to give you visa. Hey! You see why you don't have visa? This is why people, this is why visa is hard. This is why you're not getting visa. Because you are praying out of his will. The Bible says that we have only one confidence. That if we pray according to his will, he will hear us. That means when you pray outside God's will in your life, he will not hear you. Period. There is a reason and a purpose you were born. When you are born into a nation, a poor nation, hallelujah. If you are born into a poor family, glory be to God. If you are born into a, fa- a community that is poor like a jegule, woo! glory be to God. That is the, you have so much opportunity. You must begin to look around and look for the potential around you. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory be to God. So this is the problem. We don't see the way God sees us. We, you, must begin, you must begin to see yourself the way God sees you. Otherwise, you are going to remain poor. <laughs> Listen, God, if you want to solve a problem, it don't go to the rich. Because the rich, they are so proud. They can't listen to God. Their brain is blocked. Their brain is blocked. This is the privilege you have being poor. Because anytime God wants to make a drastic change, it don't go to the rich. It goes to the poor. He uses poor people. He raises them up and become, make them rich, make, make them great. Why is God doing that? Because God always wants to be glorified. Hallelujah. God will always want to be glorified. Is this professional in doing things like that? If Dango to decide to become the president of Nigeria tomorrow, that's how he got money. But it's someone from Ajegule who was born poor that cannot even have a shoe and he becomes the president, they will say this is God. Hallelujah. When you are poor and, and you are humble in the presence of God, God will take you up and place you there. There is so much opportunity. Look, look, God work with poor people. God work with poor people. Ask, ben, ask Bishop Bensi Hidahosa. Who, what is his father's name? The heir Sama of Bini Kingdom. What is his father's name? Big Gate. What is his father's name? I go die. What is his father's name? Ah, Steve Job. What is his father's name? God pick people that are nothing and make them something. It's good in doing that because he wants to be glorified. Claire, I'm talking from the Bible. In Romans chapter 4, verse 2, the Bible says that if Abraham's righteousness was by what he did, if Abraham's righteousness was by his work, he said God will not have any glory. So Abraham was completely off when it comes to righteousness. He cannot please God. Abraham was a liar. I don't think he was even a good slave master. But because he believed God, God gave him the gift of righteousness. What a glory on. When he said you are nobody, he makes you somebody. He's, he's a specialist in doing that. So all you need to do is to trust God. And allow God to use you. Stop thinking like Gideon. I, I, I have been there. I have been there. I used to think like that until I begin to find this revelation from the Bible. Woo! Ha-ha! I'm sharing secret, the secret of my life with you today. You know? So, you need to make sure, you know, that you release your ability before you die. The thing that God wants you to do in Africa, get up and begin to do it. You don't have to be a president to transform Nigeria. You don't have to be a, a governor 
to transform your nation. All you have to do, submit yourself to God and his purpose. You will transform your nation. Hallelujah.